Hey there guys, it's Jimmy Jules here and welcome to a brand new series of tutorials. This series will be covering the Prop 2.0 tools in Cray and the different ways we can use these to make a game. In each tutorial we'll cover a specific prop and this episode we'll be covering the input trigger. If I double click on the input trigger here it'll open up our settings menu and this is where we'll configure what the input trigger does. I'll go through some examples shortly but first of all I'll go through the different settings that we can change. Up the top of the settings we've got the input drop down box. From this drop down we can choose when we want our input trigger to activate. We've got a bunch of preset settings in here and these all correspond to actions the player might be doing. You can imagine this as detecting the button inputs from your keyboard. We can detect if the player is pressing W to move forwards, S to move backwards, A to move left and D to move right along with the other default character abilities. Beneath these presets we've also got some custom button inputs that we can configure. When you first choose a custom input, a box will appear that we can click to bind a key to this custom input. So if I click this and then press for example the J key, it will assign the J key to this input trigger. This will mean that the prop will activate whenever we press J. Beneath this we have the sustain time, which is how long the signal will persist for after it's been activated. This is measured in seconds. So for example, if we put a 2 into the box, the signal will stay on for 2 seconds after we let go of the button. This setting also has an input and an output tab, so it can receive a signal from another prop, or pass a signal to another prop, to either change its own setting, or another prop setting respectively. Next up is the lock player option, and I'll show you how this works with a bit of an example. You can see our trigger is set to forward, so it will activate when the player presses the W key and we have the lock player option enabled. We've just got this plugged into a number displayer so we can see when the input trigger is active. In play mode you can see our number displayer is at the top of the screen. When I press W on the keyboard it activates the input trigger but because we have the lock player option turned on it will redirect this input away from the character into the input trigger instead. You can see we can still move right, left and down, but because our input trigger is set to forwards and it has the lock player option turned on, it blocks this signal being sent to our character. Our key pressed output down the bottom here will send a signal out through the tab and through this wire to the number displayer when it's activated. We can plug this wire into any of the tabs that pop out of the settings menus and we can on the fly change the settings values. Down the very bottom we've got the power button which is used to activate and deactivate the input trigger. If it's turned off, it will not process or send any outputs. We can control this with a signal from a wire, or we can just manually click the power button as well. So for this first simple setup, I'm just going to have the key pressed output directly plugged into the number input on the number displayer. We'll go through this prop in another tutorial. If I jump into play mode, you can see the number displayer is pinned to the top of my screen there with the zero. When I press forwards or W, you can see that 0 turns to a 1. If we set our input trigger to a custom key, we can see this live when we press the key on the keyboard. You can see if I press the letter J, it will change the number displayer to 1. That's because there's a signal coming from this key pressed output going into the number displayer input and modifying the setting values. We can also show the sustain time with this method. If I set the sustain time to 1 and then tap the J key, you can see the signal stays persistent for a second after I let go. We can of course change this number to 5 for example, press the key again and it will stay active for 5 seconds. I'll show you guys a quick bit of an example now. I'll just take you through what this is doing. So I've got a sensor here detecting the player. So when the player is around this sensor, it will activate. I've got this going through the signal converter so that it converts the version 1 prop power signal into a version 2. Our input trigger up the top here is set to detect when the player is jumping. We've got both the input trigger and the signal converter both plugged into a calculator. This calculator is adding the two signals that it received from the props. That's then plugged into another calculator to check if the output is 2. So it's going to add both of our signals together, and if the output is 2, then it will activate. This is basically just an AND gate. So if both the sensor 
and the input trigger are active, then this signal converter here will activate and turn on our counter to permanently switch on the directional mover. The directional mover is targeting the wall here, so it's basically going to open up a path for us to walk through. So this setup is just detecting whether the player is in a specific area and jumping. I'll show you this in play mode now. So you can see we're over in the spot where our sensor was, and if we jump to satisfy both of the conditions for the AND gate, it will open up the path for us to walk through. We've got another setup here with an input trigger, and this setup will detect and count how many times the player has attacked. You can see our input trigger is set to detect an attack action, and when it does detect that, it's going to turn on a variable modifier, which is going to add one to our shots fired variable. I've then just got the count from this variable going into a number displayer, so we can see what the count is up to. I'll change this to a custom key just so you can see what this is doing in build mode. And you can see as I tap the J key, it's going to add one to our variable. So if we change this back to attack and jump into play mode, you can see we've got our count pinned to the top of the screen up there. And if we press the attack key, which is a click on the mouse, it's going to add to our shots fired variable. Anyway guys, that's a couple of uses for the input trigger. I hope this video helped you understand the ins and outs of the prop. If you've got any questions at all, definitely leave a comment. This has been Jimmy Jules, and I'll see you in the next one.